Wow, well that intense introduction means that today on Robbie's Arcade we are playing Robocop 2. We already played through the arcade version of Robocop 1 and give you an idea of what that was, but today we want to look at the sequel that pushed the boundaries in every single way. Everything that was good about the Robocop Arcade 1 was improved. The visuals, the references, the plot, the animations, the enemies, the difficulty, it was all ramped up. Listen to that music, isn't that proper late 80s, early 90s sort of music? Now, Robocop 2 was released the game in 1991, and this game is all over the place with effects. Whereas the first game was utilising an old 8-bit system, this utilised brand new shiny, I believe it was 16-bit graphics, so the sort of thing that the Mega Drive and the SNES were becoming fast famous for. So without further ado, let's get some credits inside this bad boy and start playing. So let's get some plot, shall we? See what the game's got in store. Now, how this relates to the Robocop 2 film about drugs, I'm not sure. But, oh, that's nice of them to stand still. Buttons have we got. We have the jump button and fire each way. I'm not sure about this part. Oh, I should also mention, it might have occurred to some of you there, but this is actually a two-player game. Again. How that relates to the actual main plot, not a clue. But you, the player two can play as a second Robocop. I don't think I like this music, to be honest. It is painfully repetitive. Slight throwback there to the bonus game. This doesn't feel particularly fluid. I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed in uh, the controls here. Of all the things that people say that this game improved over the previous game, one thing I won't say improved on is control. It doesn't feel... I don't feel like I'm in control of the characters in this one as I was in the first game. And that music is really starting to drill through me. I might have to mute it in the game. Um, let's see if we can change, turn that down a little bit, because I don't know how well you can hear it, but it's tearing me apart inside. Let's get on that game, right. Oh, good bit of poor hit detection there. We have a throw, a Streets of Rage -esque, Rage esque throw. Oh, poor old Robocop. Oh, but this game does let you have two lives, which is quite nice. Unlike the other game where it was one life, one credit. Remind me to mention later on in the video about that business with the stick and the button, so it does get referenced later. There will be trivia on this game, as always, here at Robbie's Arcade, so stay with us. There's Nick's guns. Pretty sure that guy is completely brown bread. So let's go in, shall we? I don't like the look of that clock, by the way. What an arbitrary number of seconds. Okay, so we have the main gun again. Horrifically small amount of ammunition, particularly when compared with the previous game. No, this game does feel a little bit like it was designed far too quickly. And once again, very lazy attitude to um, repetition of sprites. But one thing I do think it's worth highlighting here, this guy with the chainsaw, I don't remember this guy with the chainsaw in Robocop 1 or 2. I remember at one moment Murphy getting cut up in Robocop 2, but not in this context and certainly not by this guy. That does seem like lazy designing on the part of the developers. Uh, this game was made by Data East, um, whose logo looks so similar to that of Orion and indeed OCP, the government kind of big organisation of Robocop, that it is worth a look. This does feel rather cheap. Now, also in the comments, it is worth mentioning that if you complete this game, without dying, which by the way, is stunningly difficult. I even think it might even be not getting hit. If you're able to do that, in the end credits, there is um, additional 
signatures and stuff from the developers, like a little Easter egg for you, built into the game. But right now, this game, this is too hard, I think. Even with this level of control, and right now, me not worrying too much about credits, I can't even rely on hitting him. The throw and the grab don't seem to do that much more um, hits. But right now, whatever the boss is, and if there's any bonus stages, that's the only thing that could save this game right now. Because right now, this is getting very repetitive. God only knows what this likes to watch. Finally, we've killed the boss. So let's see what the rest of the game's got in store for us, shall we? At least that's the end of the video. How terrible is this confliction of sounds that are all happening at once? Very poor design work there from Data East. Very disappointed in you. Nice work, Rubber Oh, we have some plot. Okay, none of that was in the movie. Take me where you can get it. That never happened in any of the Robocop games. Okay. Also, sorry, how did I not mention this earlier on? Why have they got axes? Who the hell had axes in Robocop? Lazy development. Lazy, lazy buying sprites secondhand. I'll be honest, this game does serve as a huge disappointment. Particularly given the popularity of the license. You can't help but feel that these people just phoned it in. They really did. Also, they brought in some new enemies there. A new style of enemy. And what did they give him? An axe. Stop bringing in all of the axes. This isn't gauntlet. Okay, we have a new kind of enemy. Who has what I believe is some form of chain gun. Okay, and some Hulk Hogan-esque characters. I will grab that gun in due course, don't worry. Oh, we've lost our lives. And we remove his mask and he falls apart. That's dark. That's way too dark. Who the hell's this guy? No, I don't know what to make of this game at all right now. I generally don't give review numbers in this game, but right now if, uh, in this channel. But if I was going to, this game would be looking at a rather uninspiring 2 or 3 out of 10. Let's have a look. Again, one thing I, I would say, I'm not going to be able to experience properly here, but the idea of a, um, a two-player mode on this, that does interest me. Poor Robocop getting frazzled. Where would someone get an axe in Detroit? And not just an axe. But a multitude of axes, and please tell me someone saw this guy blocking my gun. Okay, this is made up. Unless they're telling us that this guy is one of the prototypes. One of the prototype Robocops from the movie, which I doubt. Terrible balancing. Terrible balancing of damage versus what they can do and what I can do. Also, I want to meet the guy who made, who thought we need to have boss music. Let's have something that sounds like I'm hitting a can over and over again. And better yet, let's get this guy to drop down chuffing mines and make them almost impossible to dodge once you're in close quarters. I almost want to just give this guy just because he's annoying me. And we just, no, we can't even just hit. No, I would say this is one of the least impressive and more importantly, least fun games I've ever played in a long time. Whereas the original Robocop, I really took pleasure in playing. It was, it was a pleasure to play that for the channel. It stopped being anything like I would call work. But this just feels broken. 
and we're down to our final life. Are we going to have anything to say for ourselves? When this guy's not falling on his ass. So once you learn the patterns, it's fine, but that's going to cost you a fortune to learn those patterns. And unfortunately, I don't like that mercenary nature of a computer game. Games shouldn't be designed that way, arcade or not. Okay, so who the hell's this guy? Now, to say this doesn't follow the plot of the movie would be a wild understatement. And also, that music is so bad. For shame. So, let's talk about some facts before I kill this game. Um, once again, Robocop 2 was originally developed by Data East, released in 1991. It was using the Data East arcade set, known as the 5th gen generation MC6 8000 arcade machine. It was a one player with optional second player as needed, and it was based on, they say, that this is from Data East themselves, saying that it was based on the movie of the same name. But if you tell if you tell me that, the two levels I've just played have got boggle to do with Robocop 2. Um, following that forward, uh, the game itself was actually released and quite popular, apparently, God knows why, in America and Japan. And both versions are actually quite different. For example, the Japanese version has a whole different intro. The beginning of the game there, you play the last segment of Robocop 1. It serves as a kind of playable introduction. Whereas in the American one, as you've seen, all it does is go straight into two meaningless levels that don't play any sense into the narrative. Uh, you even fight up against Ed 209 in the Japanese version at the beginning, which is quite a nice touch. Um, that section earlier on, I said we'd come back to it when I was pushing the vehicle with tapping the button and moving the joystick. Well, original versions of this game in Japan had you moving the joystick and in America pressing the buttons, but you could do both. And eventually they updated it so that you could use, just letting you know you could use both. Otherwise, people were using one or the other and doing half performance and invariably losing both time and, of course, money in the arcade machine. Finally, as mentioned, if you do complete this game without dying, Oh, I believe not even without getting hit at all, um, or you do the whole game in one credit even, at the end you get to see loads of signatures of people that aren't even in the credits, let alone the credit people, and their own little drawings and nicknames. So a nice little Easter egg there, but an insane uh, requirement to see it. So let's get back into this game. So we're into the next section. Kane, you're not getting away from me. Was that Kane in that suit? Weird. Get rid of Kane's man and arrest him. Aha, okay. Things have changed a bit. We've got a bit road rash. I do have one quick question. What's the vehicle and am I destroying these vans with my pistol? Is this some sort of bonus stage? I'm not sure. Don't get me wrong, I can see they've tried to make it a bit different, but narrative wise it makes absolutely bog all sense. All right, maybe this is some sort of bonus stage. I'll be honest, bonus stage or not, that made no sense at all in the narrative. Okay. Okay. I should highlight, that wasn't FPS problems. That was the actual frames per second on the game, so don't blame me. Okay, so we killed Cra Crane, he's a man in a jar, and it's the dickheads with the axes again. And they blew up. Let's see how I can go, how far I can go on a single life. Oh, it's this awful section again. I'll be honest, I think I'm gonna reference this game in a lot of videos, it is not good. Carrying on, here we go, this awful level of the game. Oh no, and it's over for Robocop. Well, it's been fun playing that, gotta say. Less impressed, one of the worst games I've ever played. But if you've got a recommendation for another game, pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot. And seizure. I think this might be death.
dead.